Welcome, everyone. My name is Dr. Gary Severance with Henry Schein, and I'll be your moderator tonight. I'm very excited to welcome Dr. Matthew Anise as our speaker tonight, as he'll review his Sprint Ray 3D printing workflow. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to go over some housekeeping. If you have a question, please type it in the box labeled have a question on the left side of your screen and we will answer them live at the end or if it's pertinent, Dr. Anise may address it immediately. This webinar is sponsored by Sprint Ray and Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. And a special treat tonight afterwards, Matt Kunzler, a technology advisor with Henry Schein, will join us for a few minutes after the presentation to talk about next steps if you are considering a Sprint Ray 3D printer, and we will open up additional Q&A session. Dr. Nice, welcome, and thank you for being with us tonight. I'll pass it over to you now. Hey, thanks, Gary. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, so tonight's topic, we are going to be focused on 3D printing. Uh, particularly the fully digital for arch workflow with the Onyx resin from Sprint Ray. Um, this is something I use almost on a daily basis, uh, 3D printing full arch temporaries. Um, just a little bit about me. We, I am a general practitioner uh, with two practices northwest of Boston. Uh, my primary focus is complex restorative and dental implants. Um, I'm a fellow in the ICOI, associate fellow in the AID. Um, the ultimate goal is to become a diplomat in the ABOI. Um, I began my implant dentistry in 2015. So that was the first implant I placed eight years ago, a single unit in Mexico. And you know, fast forward here and today, going through the workflow we're going to talk about shortly. Um, that transition, like I said, went from extractions to single implants, uh, to multiple implants, to more complex surgery. Now, basically, the only thing I do is kind of 3D printed same day hybrids or next day delivery of hybrids. Uh, there's still three other associates or four other associates now in the practices that does routine care. There are six hygienists um, in one office, two or three in the other. So we're constantly seeing patients in and out. So it's a full service practice, but I kind of built this niche within my practice. Um, you know, kind of sticking with implants, educating myself, constantly learning and adapting the technology that we're going to talk about today. These are just photos of our in-office lab. We started with just one Form 2 printer, I think about five years ago. Um, if We're not going to get into the semantics and technology of 3D printers, but, you know, that's an SLA type of printer that's going to take about two to three hours to print a model. So obviously with DLP type printers like Sprint Ray, the print, the print times are significantly faster, allowing us to deliver same day 3D printed temporaries onto patients. Uh, we have four different 3D printers. So even though this is sponsored by Sprint Ray, Sprint Ray I do have three other ones um, that I use on a day-to-day -day basis as well. They're all great. And we'll kind of talk about the value that 3D printing brings, not only to full arch dentistry, but also to general dentistry of all kinds. Um, you know, we have a same day ceramic and titanium wet mill to make custom abutments. Um, we have a dry zirconia PMMA mill so we can make our final zirconias. And, you know, if we're sticking with final PMMAs, we're doing those in house as well. Sintering ovens for zirconia and glass. Um, we have a full Exocad suite and we have a dedicated lab tech that we've added in the last year. Uh, that's crucial because if you're going to kind of dive into this workflow, it's really important, and we'll talk about that a little bit after, to have something completely dedicated to this. It's hard to jump in between your general dentistry practicing, assisting, whatnot, to handle all the things that come with printer maintenance, mill maintenance, design, uh, staining, glazing, et cetera. So if you find that this is going to be beneficial for you, that's something I strongly recommend is either to find someone to train or have in your team members and train them that you know kind of want to get out of the day to day of assisting typically. Click the wrong buttons. So what are we going to talk about for the next 40 to 45 minutes or so? Um, you know, the complete digital workflow, we're going to step by step. We're going to say super high level. A lot of these steps could be you know an hour to themselves. 
Um, we're going to talk about the ROI. Why would I do this? Why was you know why invest in this technology? Uh, the workflow and marketing of getting patients in the door and how we see them when they walk into the door to the follow up. Um, the financials. I'm going to show you the same sheet of paper that I give to my patients. Um, so you know, I'm full transparent in everything I do with these webinars. So if that's something that helps you, awesome. I can provide copies or emails too. Um, you know, additional benefits of adding script, right? Like I mentioned, it's not just for full arch. Everyday dentistry pays for itself. And then these are just the charges on top. So we can do cases like this. And then obviously I value your time. Um, you're spending the night with me. So I want to make sure you get as much value that's pertinent to you. So we'll answer any questions at the end. I'll give you my cell phone number. I'll give you my email address so you can reach out if you're watching this recorded. Uh, so just want to make sure that you're getting the value of sitting here with me for the next 45 minutes. So why focus on this? Why we're talking about full arch dentistry? I know you see it all over Instagram. Um, you know, everyone kind of wants to jump into it. It's the next one topic in dentistry, um, but it's actually for serving the patients. You know, there's 23 million. These are all uh, statistics from the American Academy of Prosthodontists. You know, there's 23 million with an indentious arch. Um, you know, 90% have dentures. Uh, the number of partial dentists will continue to increase to more than 200 million in the next 15 years. So there's going to be more and more patients that are going to need these services in your practices. Um, and with these workflows, you know, I personally eliminated any removable prosthesis from my practice. That includes partial dentures. That includes overdentures. Um, that is a recent uh, change, and I'll kind of go through what we substituted those for our patients. And it, it's great to be able to completely, you know, in one office, you know, we do everything. I do the surgeries, the scanning, and the prosthetics myself. But even if you work with a surgeon, it is better workflow for them. They don't have to have a lab tech come and do the conversions. You're in charge of the prosthetics. Um, you have had a friend that does this with his oral surgeon because he's a great oral surgeon that does the cases and has funny experience and he just wants to do the prosthetics, but he's still invested in this technology. But you're serving the people that you know, want to eat, smile and function and really don't want to remove things in and out of their mouth. Um, you know, if you just Google, go to Reddit or Google people that hate their dentures, you can scroll for hours of patients, nightmare stories, aesthetics function. And you've all seen those patients that needs, you know, 15 to 20 adjustments after you deliver, you know, brand new, perfectly fitting set of ventures. So I think it's personally not solving to an issue that patients want solved and it's causing a lot more headaches for you, your team, your staff, and really no one wins in the end with your And then, so what is this workflow? What are we trying to eliminate here with this digital workflow with the 3D printing of the same day temporaries in the office? We are removing the conversions. Um, you know, people recognize the first top two photos of you know, putting the temp cylinders in, you know, being careful not to loot over a multi-unit because that's happened to me and that is miserable for everyone involved. You have to cut off the denture and start anew and relieve that together. Um, it's messy. You're covered in acrylic. It is, it's functional. It's fine. It works. But the tissue contour isn't that great. Um, it's, you have to typically bring someone else in to have that done. The other thing you're eliminating is jigs, verification appointments. Uh, we'll go through some technology that we use that basically eliminates any sort of verification. Um, you don't have to get a temp trying and then try it in and then it squeaks and cracks or even worst case when that happens with zirconia and you hear that squeaking, it's a sound that no one wants to hear. The biggest thing that brought me into this world, um, I'll talk about the story in a little bit, is broken temporaries. They're going to break. Um, if you haven't had a broken temporary, you haven't done that many. And when they break, it is the worst call or was the worst call that I would get. It was a nightmare appointment. It would take me two, three hours to, you know, do a block temp on a methamethacrylate for three hours to make it look like teeth somewhat. Now we get those calls. We 3D print a new one if we don't have a backup ready to go. And within the hour, they're in seated with a brand new temp that fits perfectly. Um, it saves everyone nightmares. It is going to happen. And when it happens, it is no sweat off our backs. It, it happens when I'm away, when I'm on vacation. 
when I'm lecturing and my assistants can do it all by themselves. They don't need me at all. Uh, another thing is the tissue contour. I started my full arch journey with a lot of full, fully guided, stackable guide prosthesis. You can see one on the bottom right. The photos weren't that great at that time. But a lot of issues, you see a you know flat monoclane um, temp PMMA hybrid with that allows a lot of food to get stuck underneath it. Um, you can imagine what that does to the tissue. You can't control the tissue. You can't contour the tissue. You're using biologics and PRF. We'll talk about that shortly too. So you would come back and take that off and the tissue would be red, angry, lack of keratinized tissue. You couldn't heal, couldn't gain keratinized tissue. And now with you know zero bone loss concepts, you, know, you realize how important not only the health, but the thickness of how much keratinized tissue remains is going to be there for the long-term success of the implants that you did. So really taking care of those tissues, you can do that with this workflow and we'll go through that shortly too. So it, the wrong thing. Um, so, you know, going into this, you know, what, what do we need, um, you know, to get started? The, this is kind of the bare minimum. We're going to go through some recommended tools to get to, but uh, the first thing is photos. And, you know, this is something that I use the photos that I'm taking that I'll show you on my cases later. Um, I believe in this. This is just a cell phone sticking through a little light box holder. Um, it's from Photodontis. It's like three, 400 bucks. And the great thing is everyone in your team members has a cell phone. If not, you can get an office like Samsung use phone that no one wants to buy anyways and keep it there and it'll take the best photos and then you just upload that. And the best thing about that is I have DSLRs. I have the huge macro lenses and the system will pick this up, zoom in, know how to use this and produce high quality, great diagnostic case work photographs. Um, so I believe that you can get really good quality with a cell phone camera and a little bit of a light box camera. Uh, intro roll scanner. I have three trioses, two medits, an itero, and we're getting a prime scan too. So I have had them all. I've used them all um, personally for this workflow. I, I found the best outcomes with the trios. Um, you know, I've had that for the longest. Um, we use it in you know, digital dentistry every day with everything um, we scan. All of our patients, we scan like our hygienists want to scan for mouth guards, occlusal guards, um, the assistants, whitening, no matter what, everyone's crashing on how to use it. And we use it, you know, they're constantly going day in, day out. So if you haven't gone digital scanner, even if you're not doing full arch workflow or implants, I would highly recommend getting it. Same thing with 3D printing. Um, you know, we're talking about a 3D printer digital workflow. Um, obviously, you need the 3D printer. Um, the Sprint Ray, like I said, I have four. I love the Sprint Ray. It's kind of like the Tesla of 3D printers, like the integration, the seamless touch control panel, like how intelligent it is. And then the print quality is, I think, kind of unmatched so far. So um, I personally have the Pro 55, just because you need the 55 to be able to do 3D printed hybrids at the moment. Another thing you need is a designer. This could be someone that's remote. This could be someone that you have in your office that's trained in Exapad or um, you know another design software similar. Um, you know, I've worked, I have an outside designer. I have an in-house designer. So I have both of those that know the digital workflow. Um, these are what I would say is highly recommended beyond just the bare minimum. Um, the photogrammetry unit. The, this, that's a photo of the pick. I have the pick and I have the eye cam. If you're not sure what those are, we'll touch base on those. Those are those little dominoes and those little flags that you see sticking out of multi-units. That eliminates any sort of verification. You know, putting in temporary that it was captured with that, um, it goes in seamlessly. It fits perfectly every time. Some may argue with some sort of scan caps that it's not necessary. It, they could be correct. I, I just think with the workflow that we have, I've never had issues. And you'll kind of go through the ROI of adopting this with large dentistry. It, it pays for itself within the first couple of cases. So uh, I would highly recommend looking into it if you're doing full arch dentistry. Uh, bone screw kit, we'll touch base on why of this, but I would add some tendon screws um, if you don't have it for some reason. Um, CBCC, obviously, I know people that do this <clears throat> with just a pan. I take a CBCT on every single patient. Um, I think. Again, CBCTs are, should be universal across all practices, um, especially getting to this. It's, I don't see why you wouldn't get one. 
And then, like, I touched base on the beginning. I think dedicated ta- la- uh, lap tech, you don't need a CDT, mind on a CDT. He's just trying in the digital workflow. Or it could be an assistant that wants to take over because I have one of those two in the other offices, too. Um, just something that's dedicated to your full arch practice because before you know it, it becomes, you know, a practice unto itself within your practice. So I think looking at getting a team over excited, getting them involved, and then not having them jump back and forth between, okay, full arch, stain glaze, dirty, crime bridge, clean up, extractions, fillings, all that stuff. Um, so I think adding team members to grow into this position is paramount. Just it takes headaches. It, it just makes life easier for everyone. So what is the full arch digital workflow? Um, you know, we're going to go step by step. We'll go a deep dive step by step. You know, there's records, plan design. Um, that, and I'll touch with Matt too. Is so records, plan design, surgery day, post op. Your second stage scan, this is when your tissue is shrunk. This is about three to four months. And this is when you do a second try-in if you need to. Um, if there's a set of changes, if, they, if there's a cant, length, lip position, any of that you want to change. But you can just move the CAD file, construction file, and deliver the second try-in. The best part about this is everyone's had the lady with 10 dentures show up into their practice. And... That heats the way they look. They're too long. You can just move teeth, print, put a new one. Move teeth, print, do a new one. You can do. I've, I've, I have a lady that's on her like eleventh try in. Uh, so it's just someone that um, yeah, I get sick of personally. But everyone has those, if, and this just eliminates a hassle. I don't have to go back and forth communicate. It's take photos, okay, tweak it a little bit, and then the minor moves. And I think we're finally ready to get a final on her by the time. And then delivery of final. So this can be done as little as four months. Um, like I said, the verification happens on surgery day with the photogrammetry. So you can be done technically really in three or four appointments in four months. Um, you know, after the first day, after the scan, um, you know, three, four months later to make sure the occlusion, the aesthetics and the tissue contour. So you, there's no space between the hybrid. Um, you know, three, four visits, at the bare minimum, four months from day of surgery. So it eliminates a lot of appointments, saves a lot of chair time. Um, we'll touch on that with the ROI. So what is needed for your record appointment? Um, these are the things that are needed. Your 2D or 3D. This is the Vectra H2 3D facial scanner. We have this. Um, you know, It's really cool to you dial in the aesthetics because one thing that happens in your design is the scale is sometimes off between your two-dimensional photos and the 3D teeth. So this three-dimensional photo, things will align and mesh a lot better, more aesthetic, not only for full arch, but you know, for really high-end aesthetic cases, it's really nice for in size of the position, fill in the buckle cord or exarta. Uh, your CBCT, intraoral or scans. And the important thing to remember with intro scans, you want the bite taken at the desired VDO. Uh, here's a VDO gauge that we have in our practice. Uh, there's some SCL files of 3D printed ones that you can print your own. So I have printed ones that are in every op or three or four in every op because we don't know where the records are. Like all of our hygienists know which records we need. So if there's an opening in hygiene, we can throw one in. If it's a consultation ready to go, all of our assistants can do it. The docs, the other docs don't want to do it if it's a day that I'm not in the office. So we have printed ones in every operatory and it really helps because a lot of these patients have either dentures, missing posterior teeth. Um, so they have a collapsed bite, they have flare. So regaining the right bite at the desired vertical so you can not take away as much bone is paramount. Um, here's a little video. Uh, here's a little like kind of step by step of how to use this. Um, if you go video gauge um, on YouTube, you can find it. So basically, you measure it from the middle of the eye to the commissure of the lip, and then you fix the pin. Then you go and try that under the nose. And here's a case where you need to open the vertical because there's space between the chin and the chin rest. So we put a leaf gauge. We open this and then we just scan digital bite left and right side. And now we have the VDO set up so we can do a wax up to the opposing at the desired VDO. 
So make sure to measure the BDO. They all know as part of the checklist. Um, as far as photos, this is one our designer wants. Um, there's this bottom right one. I, I don't know. I think it's just to see a size of eight and nine that is in their face so that they can, you know, design the rest of the arch. But basically, you know, retracted, open, eyes open so you can evaluate cants. The next one is the exaggerated smile. That's probably one of the most important ones. That's going to evaluate mobility. So when you ask someone to take this photo, you don't want to sit there and say smile. You want to make them smile as big as they possibly can. Because they say smile, especially if they're not confident in their smile or if they haven't smiled lately or they forgot how to smile when you give them these beautiful 3D printed teeth, they're going to smile. And if they show the transition zone or if you didn't plan or do an FP1, there's times afterwards I have to take like an FP2 slash 3 and then try to reconvert it to an FP1 which is a little bit more difficult than nailing it the first time. So make sure you really make your patients laugh. Take three of these smile photos. Take smile, smile bigger, smile the biggest. Uh, we, we always do this. I mean, you can go tickle them if you want to, or if you're good at joke telling, you can try that as well. Uh, then two profile sides, just evaluate, you know, lip support. Um, you know, if this is really collapsed, one thing that hybrids won't really do that overdentures could do is fill out that lip support. Um, your, your size of wedge position from the profile. This with them looking up at you from behind. This will evaluate their midlines that are currently. And then again, the incisal edge lengths to set up the size of eight and nine relative to their face. And then the rest based on the tooth library, the rest will fill in. So that is the photos that they want. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You don't have to go full FGTP style photos on these. And so we do all the records, we do the scan, CBCT photos. What we get is the pre-design. And what that is, uh, this is what we get back. These are screen grabs from, you know, my computers that we're designing. On the upper left, uh, we have kind of a wax up bone reduction guide. So this is where the design to make sure the multi-units are coming up where we want. Make sure we have enough bone reduction for the teeth. I can see the amount of bone reduction here in the wax up on the upper right. This is the proposed, this is the blue is what's current. So I know that the teeth are pretty much in line with the current, you know, incisal edge position. So I can even place the implants and put an extract tooth back in there if I wasn't doing this guided to evaluate, you know, if I place one on the lateral or if I place one immediate in the central, you know, use existing teeth, you can serial extract teeth and keep some that you know you're not placing implants. So you can kind of have the aesthetic styled in or implant position dialed in. And you know, here's another pre-design. So here's the existing dentition. Here's the proposal design you know, down below. Obviously we're lowering the bite and reducing here because they have an upper denture with an anterior ride. So this is the things that we get back. And the big question is, do we do this guided? There are options. Um, again, I started mine with the full arch, full sack rule guide. Um, even you can still use that workflow. Um, I know they've even gone to 3D printed guides, so you can work with the design. They'll send you the SCL files. Instead of the metal stack rule, it's just a 3D printed um, based on your system. And then you can use the digital workflow after the implants are in for the full, you know, complete digital workflow too. So you can kind of do the hybrid between the full stack rule with the PMMA in the 3D printed temps. You could do a 3D printed lab guide, you could just do a 3D printed pilot. That's mostly what I do. This is a case that we did last week on the bottom left where I just have a 2.0 diameter drill. Uh, mostly I use it for the angle around sinuses and mental nerves, uh, just to get as much AP spread as I possibly can. Um, it's usually tooth borne. You can do bone guide or pin guides with bone, but we keep it pretty simple. You know, I've done a bunch of these free handed as well. But I, I think having, you have the CBCT, you have the digital scan. Um, if you have a design software, Blue Sky Bio is, you know, dollar or two exports. There's labs that do it for you. It, it's really good to kind of pre-plan, know your implant, and that helps you keep your implant inventory down as well. So I, I'm a believer in guided. Is it absolutely necessary? I, I think certain cases it's beneficial. Um, highly aesthetic, do arch, but... Besides that, it's more of kind of what you feel comfortable, how many of these you've done. 
I, I strongly recommend like my associates try to get a few of these. I said, dude, got it. Like get the hang of it. You know, I've done you know, a few thousand of these by now. So I know, you know, kind of where things are, where I want things to go, but I still use a pilot guide just in case. So surgery day, this is like the different topic. This is the big change in the digital workflow. And we'll touch base on this. Um, this is determine your stitching strategy. And I have this photo of Hansel and Gretel, you know, they're kind of leaving down breadcrumbs to find their way back home. And that's gonna be really important because we did the pre-op x-rays and scans, but the scans in their design are based on the existing teeth and dentition. During surgery, your tissue is gonna move, teeth are gonna be removed, and there's no way to realign the midline, the occlusion, the can't aesthetics. So we need something fixed or we need something that's going to tie us back to our pre-operative design. And there's four ways that we could do that. We could serial extract teeth and leave with existing teeth. Um, a lot of times these are canines that don't have any periapical abscesses, then you can kind of bank them afterwards. Second molars are amazing. If you have two second molars, like I'm leaving those all day because you're not placing implants in the second molars. Um, you know, even you could do second bicuspid angled and then add a molar cant when you go to zirconia or, you know, whatever your final restoration may be. But existing teeth are easy because you don't have to really do anything additional. Uh, the most common one that we find we have to use are fixed geometry or items. I'll show you what those look like. We 3D print. Uh, little, they almost look like healing caps. And then we place that bone screw kit that we talked about earlier. And then we screw those either into the palate or into the you know, kind of retro molar pad area, areas that we're not going to be working on. And then those are fixed and don't move. So that's going to give stitching points for our designer and exocap. Another way is doing a denture. So everything we're talking about for the design is based on, you know, denture 101, size of edge position, tooth position, uh, where the smile is. So you have everything dialed in with kind of a trial denture. And then you just copy that design for your hybrid. And then when you try in the denture, you just do, after you place the implants and place, place your healing caps, you just do a wash of that denture, do a 360 scan outside the mouth. And now you have your implant position relative to your incisal edge position. So that's another really cool workflow. I've never really used this. Um, my friend Sully Sullivan, you know, he's a big fan of this, um, this workflow. So it was pretty cool when he showed me that, but it's something definitely, if you want to you know, not load and you need to denture in the backup, boom, now you're ahead of everything. And then that way you can print it and deliver the hybrid or temp hybrid in a couple of weeks or you know, eight weeks, whenever you're ready. <sighs> Anatomical landmarks, little tricky. I mean, if they have like tori, awesome things that aren't going to move, like paddle tori, like, you can leave that. Um, tuberosities, um, retro molar pads. If you do like an all on four in the lower, but it gets a little bit tricky just because so many things move during surgery, your flat reflection, your bone reduction, your teeth. Um, it, it's just risky. Uh, I, the other ways are so much easier. Don't add that much more time. So, but if you're going to just make sure during the pre-op records, they're scanning as much anatomical data, all at the vestibule, all the, all the way around the hemorrhoid notches, you know, all the way down the soft tissue, uh, soft palate line, just get as much information as you possibly can during the scan data, because it's going to make your life easier. Let's see this one. So this is what we're talking about as quote unquote breadcrumbs. So on the upper left here, we can see we placed a little bone screw that looks like a healing cap. And then we had two existing implants. We slow rolled this case where we placed implants to use for an overdenture, but then we eliminated overdentures. And now instead we're just doing PMMAs that have to be changed out every two years. Um, it's gonna be better for the patient. They're happier. They don't have their gaskets getting loose. They don't have them wearing out. They don't have food getting caught underneath. And he has an opposing upper denture. So we placed these and then we just decided to go 3D printed hybrid on him. So th these implants are stable. They're not moving. They're going to stay in the same position. And then this aligns with our pre-op data. And then when we take out the rest of the teeth and take a scan of the implants, these will be able to be stitched to the implant position design. 
Here in the middle, we place was it six implants, and then we left the two again second molars, or I think we have a wisdom tooth up here on the upper left as well. So we have three data points. So those didn't move, so they can align and stitch those easily. Then we have two uh, palatal screws into the palate. These go in maybe about you know two millimeters. They're stable, atraumatic. Nothing's up there. We're not going super deep, but a little bone screw tense. Um, here's like a three D printed denture that you would just wash. After you place the implants, um, again, you have your incisal edge position, you have the occlusion, and then you can just do a scan outside the mouth and then just create a 3D printed temp hybrid and exocat off of that. And again, the same thing with two paddle screws right in the middle of the palette. Like, obviously, we're not reflecting that far. Um, you know, that's going to give a pre-op design before and allow them to get the midline, the aesthetics. Because if you just took a scan of this, you'd have no idea where eight and nine are. They're not seeing face, not seeing photos. They have, they just see a scan of these implants and okay, that would just be the best guess. And they don't know what the opposing looks like. So it's just easier if you have reference points to get you back to your original preoperative design. So, you know, we decided, so back to surgery day, uh, we decided our alignment strategy. You know, if it's just teeth and we're keeping canines or, you know, second molars, your preop scanning something is fine as long as they aren't, you know, super mobile. Um, you know, denture, if you're doing the denture, make sure it's already 3D printed in hand. Um, and then we scan that and we send that to our designer. Uh, we use Dropbox to communicate with our remote designer. Uh, then we remove the teeth uh, that we plan on it, or all of them, if that's the case. We do our implant placement. Um, we place the correct MUAs. So we want to make sure that we're still respecting biologic width and run in pigeon bone because you will have bone remodeling. If you place it, you know, right on top of the crest, you still have to allow the biologic width. Otherwise, you're going to have constant inflammation around those multi units. But then you don't want them super tall, and they're you know sticking up, and you know, they're going to be food trap um, around the hybrid. So you can always change them later. But if you have to, then you have to do a new scan. Um, an important thing in this whole workflow, if you're using photogrammetry is you're placing the recognized and approved healing abutments. I had a friend that brought in like a lab with an eye cam and they came to his office and they had the patient ready and all this. And he only had BSB uh, healing abutments. Well, the eye cam didn't have BSB healing abutments in their library. So he was on the phone trying to back engineer and try to add them because you do a scan of these healing caps, you can't see the multi-unit. These photogrammetry things that we'll show you shortly, they're on the multi-units, but you need to stitch these two together. So you have to have the recognized geometry between the two to align the two. So just make sure that, you know, talk to your designer. Um, you can get, you know, ones from Nobel, that's what we kind of use these white ones, but just make sure that you have the right things. Like even this small thing that he thought he was fine with, it ended him, his patient leaving the denture and kind of ruined his day. I was getting calls and texts about that. Um, and then you scan, then you can use photogrammetry that I use or there's scan bodies. Um, there's, I went to a case today, uh, my friend, neural surgeon, he was using the Insta Research workflow. Uh, there's the TH gaps, Jonathan Avenine, um, and, you know, his power track. You know, I know he's a big proponent of just, you know, proper scanning techniques. It's whatever works in your hands. Me personally, I've had no issues with the photogrammetry. I know people say it's you know, kind of a big investment, but you know, as we go through the ROI, like I said, it pays for itself. You know, because I've never had one of these not fit, and you know, we're into I don't know, a few hundred with this workflow in the last year. So it, it's seamless, it's straightforward, and then it just goes in perfect every time. And then after we do that, we lay down PRF. I strongly suggest you get into biologics. Um, you know, we kind of lay them down. So when we do our design, we make it ovate, we make it compress, and we kind of just leave the buckle and palatal buckle or leave, uh, just we'll leave it open and let it heal by secondary intent. And then you'll gain keratinized tissue or around your implants. And it's healthy, it's beautiful, it heals a lot faster. So with this workflow. And then what happens is basically heals around the ovate temporary. And when that happens, 
it's almost like a bridge that you don't have to take off because nothing's getting sucked under there. So having a perfect probate ponte that it's not, yeah, like I said, I have patients that we take off once every five years because we've taken it off and it just, there's nothing. It's immaculate. So, um, you know, the less times you take it off, the less stripping is true, the less uh, chance of not reconnecting and having an implant mushroom because that's happened to me. Um, so basically anything that's gone wrong in this workflow, I've kind of had to go wrong. So I'm trying to help you and steer you from making the same mistakes that I have. So photogrammetry, if you don't know what that is, you've heard me mention it. These are these little dominoes. This is the iCam. These are these flags. These are both patients of mine. Um, so I have both. I have one for each office. You know, I was sick of carrying a thirty-five thousand dollar, you know, Wally looking like thing between the two, and my assistants were like not being able to sleep at night because it was in their trunk. And so I didn't. If that broke again, that ruined my workflow, ruined my day, ruined my next, you know four months. So we invested in both. We have both. And you can kind of see this is what they look like. You get a little STL file. So even though it's on the multi-unit, we chose what healing caps we have. So they put in the geometry of the healing caps and then we switch those to the healing caps that we have. So we can see the alignment. And all this does is verify the implant position. It skips verification jigs. They fit perfect, you know, within I think 0 0.4, 0 0.6 microns. It's just crazy how well they fit. So I'm a big proponent of them. Um, I think it works great in this workflow. Um, so once you get all this to your designer, again, you upload everything, you let them know. Um, it's paramount during the surgery to have communication throughout. We communicate on WhatsApp with our designer because we want to make sure before we start taking out the teeth, if there are breadcrumbs or the palatal screws that they align well, because sometimes the skin could have some stitching issues or we have to take an impression and we didn't capture everything. So they kind of give us green lights and red lights of when we can go to the next step. So make sure there's communication, like there's all of us in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp chat, we're communicating all day during surgery. So you know, here's our design. This is kind of you know, this design we did in that patient. Everything stitched over, um, those breadcrumbs and existing implants we brought over to the patient. You know, we took out the teeth. We did the scan of where the existing implants or the implants that we placed were, plus that little breadcrumb. That allowed us to stitch, then we placed the implants with the screw axis holes so you can see where they are right through the occlusal. Like this is all just freehand, so it came out pretty well. Uh, the intaglia will pop out in 08, and that's our design. We 3D print this. Next slide. So the workflow, we did the scans, we did the design. And we're now we're going to the print and post process system with the Onyx system for full arch hybrids with Sprint Ray. So you load this into Rayware. Um, you want to make sure the supports aren't in screw axis holes. Uh, you don't want one of those supports going right up because then the screw will not go in. You can't screw the multi unit. It's happened to me. <coughs> and we've had a reprint. Um, approximately 30 to 40 minutes we've seen with the Onyx and the Pro 55. Could be a little bit faster with the 55S. Um, it's pretty average speed right now, or pretty good speed. I, I have some of my old E1s like 55 minutes. So um, I always print two. No reason not to. Um, the biggest thing with this is you do not want to place in the Pro Wash. Um, that is different. Uh, they have the whole system or kit that you want to get. You want to get the Pro Pure 2. You want to get the wash you don't want to push on X in the wash because it will completely ruin the outer surface. And it's almost, it will take two hours to wash off and make it look somewhat aesthetic. It gets all dimpling and stippling. And I found out because my first time putting it on, I'm like, why does this look so bad? And I found out that I put it in the pro wash. So you just barely want to lightly spray with 91% IPA, air dry very thoroughly, um, remove supports, try the screws just to make sure there's no additional resin. And make sure you just constantly dry the screw access. Dry resin or cured resin in there is no fun. You can drill it out, screw won't go in, your screw will get stuck. Just be really cognizant. If there's things left over on the teeth that are in the intaglio or lingual or wherever, you can remove that easy inside the screw chamber. It's just not fun. Just be really cognizant of uh, that's really dried out and you can get screws in there. And the most amazing thing is this probe here too. Um, it is 
great. It is four minutes with the A and B zone. Secure this. I sometimes stir it twice. Um, you can do seven and a half and I think eight and a half. Um, you know, this is great for same day stuff that we'll talk about shortly um, with the Onyx system too. And then we stain and glaze. Um, so stain and glaze, these are kind of the big three for the Onyx resins. I personally like the OptiGlaze. We get the best aesthetic results. Almost all the things we do is with the OptiGlaze. Um, our formula for the Gingiva, two red, one blue, one red, one red brown. Uh, you can use Anaxent. Um, it's really good. Mostly PMMA. I've seen better results with Anaxent. Uh, Chalb here, Minasane. They're awesome. They're really responsive when you know, OptiGlaze, uh, I think everyone was doing 3D printed hybrids because you couldn't get them. For you know, they're sold out for a period of time. So I got Tom and you know, had great results with them, and they've been really good. And it's really, really fast and looks just as good, especially for temporaries. So, you know, any of these, whatever works best in your hands, your text hands, your assistance hands. But these are kind of the big three that I've seen, and you know, we've had a lot of good success with the Octoblaze. So after we deliver, we torque directly to the multi units of about 15 or hand tight. Um, you can always deliver the next day too. Um, it, it, sometimes it works better that way. Do art. Sometimes everyone's tired. Um, you know, they're not going home. They're not eating and functioning. You know, they're not eating anything solid for quite some time. So they go home in healing caps and you deliver the next day. The gingiva is still you're, They're still numb. They don't really feel anything. Um, you know, I've had that happen. Depends on the workflow with your office, you know, with your team, with your you know, all of that. So that's up to you. But I've done it both ways, mostly same day um, with sedation, which is easier. And then we do a one week post op appointment, then the second stage appointment in two to three months. Um, if we don't have to change the multi units, uh, we just do a soft tissue scan to see if the tissue's healed. Some photos, write down any changes the patient's desires, bigger, smaller, can't address occlusion, et cetera. And, but if we have to change the multi units, sometimes a little bit too facial, I try to get right to that incisal edge, but sometimes it comes through the incisal edge or a little bit more. You can use like a Rosen screw or power ball. Um, you can offset those by 20 degrees. You can do angled screw channels. So sometimes I'll just do that. So I'm changing the multi unit. Um, there's other options that you have to change in the MUA, but sometimes I just change it because it's way too facial. And then, um, yeah, we'll do a new ICAM. And the important thing to know if, which multi-unit are we talking about? Because if it's most posterior one, then you need to coordinate the same day design typically. But if it's, you know, number, you know, I cuspid, you know, and you have six implants, I just take off the old temporary, remove that attachment and put it back in and wait a week or two. Um, but so you deliver the new temp, better adapted with any changes. You scan, you take photos, and you let them wear it for a week. I never do a rush design. They come back in and then they sign off. Make sure they sign off for the aesthetics. That's huge because once you go to final <clears throat> and they say they don't like it, it's at least you have a signed documentation they have to pay for the remake. Um, so they come back in, meet with the front desk person, sign it off, and we just send everything off for final. So it's don't make them do it that day. Um, they'll go around, they'll go in the mirror, they'll talk to their friends. Just wait a week, have them come back in and sign off. It doesn't add much time to you. All right, so go into why a little bit. Um, so this is kind of from my pre previous experience. Uh, the fully stackable guide, uh, you know, one PMMA backup zirconia, your lab goes right around seven grand. Um, you know, typical, you know, sometimes some are more, some are less. About average is right around there. Uh, it was an oral surgeon today who had a case that came in that was like five grand for a lab tech to do a PM uh, traditional venture conversion. Um, so, and it fit you know, really crappy and it's going to cause issues for some implants. So here your design is, you know, anywhere from like 250 to 500, you know, right on average to have an outside design. And then you can print as many things as you want. Your chair time for things to break. Like I said, my biggest thing was I had two cases break on the PMMAs. And when they break, like I said, I've had to replace implants. It causes them to fail because it just cracks a little bit. And then they're putting lateral pressure on non-integrated implants. It splits, it, you know, I've taken one out and the only implant that remained, the other three failed, was the one where the crack was because they're going to crack where the temp cylinders are. I've had it sit there and, you know, I placed those all in four, it failed twice, it broke three times. 
had to make like a hand acrylic, had to give him a denture, then it broke. It was just a nightmare and had to write him a check for, you know, it, even though I did all the work and just for a full refund. So all of that, something breaks. Like I said, we 3D print. We always have a backup because we always print two. My assistants swap it in, swap it out. That's it. It takes nothing. We get them in right away. We tell them it can happen. Um, you know, a lot of these resins are getting better. It's not happening as frequently, especially down the inclusion, and you give enough restorative space. But it, it just makes life significantly easier for doing and doing the volume that we're doing. You know, and then like a spring ray adds more value. It'll it'll pay for itself just with general dentistry. Never mind what you're doing here, what you're saving here. And then if you do two case a month with this workflow, you have the savings per case. Like I said, you're probably going from, you know, seven to eight grand down to like 2,500. So, you know, say five, four to five grand a case, two of those a month, eight to 10 grand a month, you know, times that by 12, all the equipment's paid for in a year. And then, you know, run the 179 deduction decreases your tax responsibility or liability. Um, so, and it makes sense to refund. So, and there's value in things besides full arch. Really, the only thing that's only full arch is the photogrammetry. Um, but, you know, I stand by and use it, you know, almost day in, day out. And then, never mind the ease of mind. Like my surgery, I go in there, numb, do all the things. My surgery is like an hour, hour and a half. And then I just sit there and do nothing for two, three hours. I do checks, I do post ops. Um, my system hangs out with the patient, they're sedated. Um, close by in the next room over, so I'm not far behind, but I'm get to get stuff done, and then I just go there, do an inclusion check, and I'm done. Not doing conversions, I'm not over there, and I fully trust them with the workflow. They can go to basically any office with the technology and do everything besides place the implants in the multi-units and suture, obviously. But it's everyone likes it, makes dentistry more enjoyable for them. Um, so it's and we're like two years into it and we've had new systems join and they can't go back to general dentistry afterwards. So marketing, how do we get these patients? Um, yeah, I believe we offer complimentary second opinions. Um, I think that's huge. It's not free. Um, you know, we built so many different things and systems and value and the aesthetics of our practice where we close a high amount of people that come in with the secondary opinions. Um, we'll talk about clear choice shortly. Um, our team knows where to train. The screen is huge. You know, if they've already had dentures, they just come and take a pan and sit in a consult room. There's no need for them. I don't have to carry a probe. I don't have to diagnose. It's just evaluate bone. And like I said, we don't do a full comprehensive exam on these patients. We invite them to come in. We book them, you know, in hygiene openings or side chairs so they don't take a primary column. We just take a pan, talk to them, give them some financials. And if they're, you know, there, then we go for a full comprehensive an evaluation and sit down with a loved one a second time. So it's just to get them in the door so they can see what the options that they have are. Uh, make sure you train your team, you know, what to do on the phone, what to do in person when they're talking and answer the questions. Um, you want you don't want just tire kickers left and right. They have to be able to see who's value. A lot of these funnel systems here on the right hand side, they'll go through credit history, they'll go through how ready, how financially motivated they are. And like, like I said, with the complimentary or doing this workflow, like our pricing, I'll show you what our financial arrangement is. Um, I think the next slide It's I've seen 40 grand just for the extractions of bone grafts and then 40, so like 80 grand for like a single arch. Like with the, it's, I mean, you can charge whatever you want. I like guess fine. That's, I fully support that, but that, I think that's crazy that, you know, we're a fraction of that and we can do it with just as much, um, you know, ROI or, you know, our increased cost because all of our costs have gone down implementing this technology and our prices have made the same. So our profitability has just gone up. Um, so have a set fee. You know, just don't start charging. Don't show D97 to whatever, like all these fees on a dentrix printout and then give that to a patient. It's confusing. Keep it simple. It's all in set fee. You know, sometimes you're going to make up more. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit more on biologics, materials, whatever. Just you'll make it, you'll still do well in the end. It's just patients like that. Clear Choice is bringing market awareness. You're not going to compete with them. They have a million dollar marketing budget per year. They're going to spend if you, you know, pop on daytime TV, if you're home with your kid, you're just homesick. And then in between the pharmaceutical commercials, you're going to see these advertisements for teeth and smiling, which is great because I have two near me that 
we get second opinions from them, we close 99% of those cases. Just we don't have that hard sale tactic where everyone gets hybrid. You know, we do complex and general dentistry too. So not everyone is getting a hybrid. You know, I talk a lot more people out of getting hybrids than I talk into. Um, and like I said, have a team member that's dedicated to the process through a phone call, through the consultation. A lot of times it's an assistant or like a front that can jump out back that's cross trained. They, they like it's a big decision for them. It's a big investment. It's good when they see the same face. Um, you know, we've implemented that in both practices, so I, I think that's huge. These are some of the it, these are some of the funnel systems and some of the marketing we use. You know, this is Gilliard. I just Google Gilliard and they decided to put you know our magazine on once they feature. Uh, Wonders Agency. They have a funnel system that we use too. Dental implant machine. Again, it's like a funnel system microsite. You don't want to just say we do this on your normal website. You're gonna want like a kind of a microsite drip CRM campaign to keep these people interested. Um, and then your virtual consult. We do a lot of these virtually. Um, we'll do virtual consultations and they'll get presented financials. So they're not wasting your time. And they can see, you know, if it's a good fit, if it's financially available, and if you're the right fit for them. So we use all of these to help, you know, do get our patients in the door and do the amount of, of these arches that we do, which is typically about, you know, 13, 14 a month, I would say. So and that's just with me. So I know there's people that do a lot more. I know there's people that you know, do one or two a month, but it's working out for us. I think we're wrapping up here. So here's our financial arrangement. Um, you know, this is what we charge. These are our fees. So you can kind of see just removal, placing implants, graft, temp teeth, four months. There's no codes spelt out. Sometimes they want it a little more detailed, but it's just plain sight. And just like we give them a financial menu here is, I mean, just, just like we give them, you know, a treatment menu, they have different options, you know, between a PMMA or zirconia and like a thimble bar. Those are usually the three options we give them. Here's a financial menu. Here's a prepayment discount. Here's no interest in our office. And here's like proceed finance that we use a lot for third-party financing. So definitely have a third-party like finance company too. They're going to do a lot of your cases, but you'd be surprised how many people just prepay to save that you know, 1200 bucks or so, which is crazy that you know, they haven't had teeth. But so the rest of the office... Uh, what else can you do with a 3D printer with Sprint Ray? Surgical guides. Uh, you have the AI design uh, with surgical guides, or they'll come with surgical guides for you. So you can just hit print, custom healing contours, and you know, custom healing abutments. If you're not immediate loading and you want to have natural emergence of your implants, uh, temporary teeth. I'll do a lot of like my full arch. Um, so we'll just scan the temps or preps, or especially if I do like combo implant and preps. We'll just place the implants and then scan, then they'll have just a 3D printed temp. The tissue response is amazing. If it breaks, we print a new one. Um, you know, it, I, we just do it for all the cases. It, it takes not much time. And within like 20 minutes of printing, it, they just sit there and we place them at the end. You know, smile mock-ups, selling your cases. You can do the digital facial design and then design everything, print shell temps, and they can actually wear the smile. And then once they have the smile on, they don't want to take it off, they're sold. So it's going to help you with your set of cases and you know kind of doing the complex care. Uh, you can do permanent crowns with the Vigo resin. Um, you know we were talking about that earlier, quote unquote. You know it's there. It's they complain. I, I've heard great things. I use it more for long term temporaries personally. Um, you know splints. That's going to be your money maker, uh, especially with the AI same design. You can basically get you know by the time the hygiene does a scan in the beginning, by the time they leave their appointment, they get the night guard that day. At the end of that appointment, sorry, within like an hour, you can get that back. So it's really cool with that. That you can print, and then we just print two. We give them two, you know, two for five hundred bucks, and then if you break one, it's fifty bucks. So it's way for more people to get night cards, and it's getting, instead of getting charged hundred bucks each time, that's kind of what we do in our office. <laughs> you can do three D printed dentures, which is great. Even if you want to do the traditional final, you can skip two to three steps um, by you know printing. A mock up and then just doing a wash of that. So you can do dentures in two steps. You can do the permanents. I'm not the biggest fan of the permanent 3D printed dentures personally, but I'll do them temporarily um, for healing dentures or I'll do them. Like I said, I don't do removal anymore, but this is what we were doing. Um, but sometimes I'll print them to do the workflow um, of that. 
like we talked about earlier, those breadcrumbs or the incisive edge positions, I'll use that. And then, like I said, the temporaries for complex restorative treatment plan with implants. That, that's and like the more the residents come out, the more the technology comes out. This is where we are now, but this is going to continue to evolve. So it's better to jump on the train now, definitely. Um, and then here are some of the cases. I think these are all in like the last month. So these are you know teeth that came in, teeth out. These are them leaving that same day with the 3D printed teeth. Um, yeah, some more cases right there. That you know, we I think these are all from like the last month or so. So these are we're constantly using it, we're constantly tweaking it, but I think we've got the workflow pretty much down. And a little bit just right on time. So I want to open this up for Q and A's. Again, I know we covered a lot and we stayed really surface level. Um, yeah, I didn't go to the questions. I'll kind of go through this now, but you know, there, there's the Instagram, uh, John Ward uses the lab tech that's doing the cases too, design. That's my email address. That's my cell phone. And we'll jump to questions. If you want to jump back on Gary. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Anise, thank you so much. And you dove a little deep and <laughs> great cases, wonderful job of keeping very busy. We do have a few questions if you have a few minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. One in particular, your last slide answered it. Um, it was asking, you know, can the sprint ray printer fabricate bleach trays, aligners, guards? Nobody's printing aligners yet, right? Not yet. I know that's been in the talk for, I think I've heard it for eight years now, that yeah. it's there. I think people are testing it. So you have to do this. I've had an orthodontist that did the model workflow. It's really good for minor tweaks, but they jump back into Invisalign after like two years of having like an in-house 3D printing tech. Um, it's you can do it for minor, but it's the same thing. You need to diagnostic uh, where you need to print the models and do suck bounds of the models. So you can do a model workflow if you're doing it for models. I don't think the Pro 55 is your best bet. Just because the build platform is smaller, but if you want to do hybrids and general, then the 55 you kind of have to go with. Great, but suffice it to say, the Sprint Ray can do what every printer prints. Yeah, no, yeah, you the resins it. they replace a lot of resins. Uh, you, they have a lot of resin profiles already loaded. Um, you know, the curing unit has the resins in their curing system. You know, et cetera. So right. it's stuffing. It's not just you don't have to use just Sprint Ray. Uh, and then another couple of questions on the, uh, we focused on hybrid prosthetics tonight, comparing what it would take, and I know you did a little bit on the ROI, but how many appointments do you save doing a digital versus analog or the conventional way of a hybrid prosthetic? So analog, you're doing, uh, the first appointment's the same, the records are the same. So once you do the surgery... Then it gets into the verification appointments. That's where the big thing is. So you have a same day tap. And then when you go there, instead of doing a new temporary, the second stage, now you're going back for, you know, typically a RGC pattern, resin, stitch, um, multi-unit level impression. Then you need your verification jig. Then you need your try-in. And then if that trying isn't perfect, then you need your another trying that's sent back to the lab and then communicated, or that trying doesn't fit. Now you have to section that, relute that, put that back. So it, dep it depends on how good your lab is, how good your impressions are, how uh, what materials are you using, how stable are they. Um, so I think it shaves at least three appointments off. And then yeah. the appointments that you're doing, you're just dialing in the aesthetics. If you have to dial in the aesthetics, you still have to do all that after the fact with the triangles, and you're not going to paint and stain and glaze those triangles, or the lab's not going to do it, so they're not going to get the full effect. So, um, yeah, absolutely, and and certainly patient, you know, appreciates less appointments, travel, everything else, and yeah. So they come in, we have a new temporary. We oh, I don't like the shade, and again with the roof stains, we just stain them back down. Okay, they're too bright. All right, then we know how to make it. We just have a shade guy to match it to a B one inch, or if it's beach white or et cetera. Yeah, that's a good question that came up too about applying the stains. Have you seen any shifts in shade for these printed materials or the stains? Yeah, so these are just, I tell people this, it depends on their social habits. Um, you know, tobacco smoke, you're just going to get on there. If they shouldn't be smoking, we tell them they should quit smoking. They're dropping, you know, 25 to 45 grand in this work. And then I've had patients like cigarettes as soon as they walk out the door. 
<laughs> watch them do it. Like, like my jaw dropped, but, um, so there, so like social habits, it will still pick up stain. It is a acrylic resin. You can put like a glaze or two coat on top mm -hmm. to prevent it. But you know, over time it's going to pick up, but you just tell patients that, um, you know, I've had some that look immaculate, like the day they went in, but most get a little dingy, but hey, it gets too dingy during the healing phase. You know, after six weeks, put a new one on. It's not too bad. And just like, this is going to be better than what you had. Like you can see those before photos. Yeah. Uh, most of the patients that we've seen, like a little bit of steam is significantly far better than, you know, what they came. I mean, most of them have teeth when they walked in. Great. Uh, a couple of questions on the instrument you showed for getting the vertical dimension, measuring it. Uh, yeah. If the patient doesn't have any denture in the mouth now, how do you... Uh, 3D yeah. printed denture. So I just do a best guess. I just sit there and okay, your VDO, here's your size of the pillow edge. You come down, you know, about 13 millimeters or so, set up, evaluate that. Then I just make something on the bottom to match the VDO. I mean, that's, we just make a 3D printed denture and best guess. I've had that happen um, a few times. So we yeah. do scans. My lab guy makes a denture. I'm like, just do your best guess. Like, I just need to show in size of edge position. And then I try it in. If it's way off, I get the occlusion on. I measure the vertical. And then I'll draw the midline or I'll fix the cam and take photos. And that gives them a reference of where we want the design to go. Because, I mean, some of these people don't even have teeth. Or I had patients come in with no dentures. Um, so, but that's the best thing about these 3D printed. Like, just give me something that resembles a denture that's going to fit over the tissue. Yeah. And then I can mark the midlines or I can show the midlines with the photographs and just get the video dialed in. So great. And final one on the material you talked about a little bit on X, which you said not to put into the wash. Yeah. Um, somebody mentioned there may be a, another type of wash, an oil based wash. Have you heard about Yeah, that? I've never tried that. I just do the spray white with the okay. uh, 91%. Oh, you, if you do a light spray, like it, with a wash bottle. So before I threw it in the mechanical wash and it's really high pressure and it's going to wow. ruin the finish on that. So if you just do a light mist, get rid of some of the excess and then air dry really well, it, we've had great results with that. So I haven't looked into the oil base just because I haven't had the need to. Okay. But I'm sure I'll look into that myself. And it bas basically takes off the air inhibition layer and all this, right? And that's yeah, so you just want to get rid of the excess resin and air dry. It's mostly the excess resin and everything on top, and then you want to cure that. So, Well, Dr. Anise, thank you so much. We're right on time. Um, uh, your expertise is phenomenal. And I do want to mention, you know, if some wanted to see other applications of the Sprint Ray printer, you've done uh, several uh, webinars on that, and they can find that at the Henry Schein uh, page as well. So I want to thank you very much for tonight's webinar. Um, and if it's all right, I'll turn it over now to Matt Kunzler, the technology advisor with Henry Schein. If at any point you would like to schedule a demo experience, which is phenomenal what we can do virtually, or if you'd like to request a quote, you can do so by clicking right on the screen on the quote box on the right side of your screen. So Matt, I'll turn it over to you and another Matt. Thank you, Dr. Anise, so much for yeah, your thanks, attention. Sorry, appreciate it. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Matt Kunzler now. Matt? All right. Everyone hear me okay? All good. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Anise. I know I learned an awful lot tonight. Um, uh, just a, a few quick slides here from me. Uh, I know that was uh, an awful lot to, if this is your first uh, look into digital dentures. Uh, what we want to... Um, share with you tonight real quick is that uh, I'm going to give you a little background about me. Um, I have been in dentistry since uh, 2005 in a variety of different roles. Uh, over the last, I don't know, 10 years more specific to uh, CAD CAM, digital impressions, and, you know, just this evolution of digital dentistry. So with that, uh, over the last few years, we've been developing a way for you to get a virtual experience, um, to get information that you're after. We have a group of uh, uh, people at Shine called uh, technology advisors or digital advisors. We are a group of 12 that span the country that our goal is to help you connect the dots. 
if you have one of these pieces of technology and you're wanting to expand your abilities in your practice, you want to expand your indications of what you're doing, um, we are here to help you do that. So if you have a cone beam already or a scanner already and you're looking to uh, integrate a 3D printer, then we can help you make that decision. We can help you guide you along that way. Uh, again, our group is, uh, is full of a lot of years of experience. So um, with that, one of the tools that we have developed in order to uh, help you with that, again, is with this technology advisor team. We cover digital impressions, comb beam, two-dimensional imaging, 3D printers, CAD cam lasers, and a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, I would uh, recommend that you schedule an appointment with your technology advisor. I believe my link is coming up. You can uh, certainly click on the link and schedule an appointment with me directly. And we can go through any or all of these workflows. Now, one important thing that I want to uh, make sure that I highlight is this um, is the idea that we are uh, here to help you make a good decision. So we are, for example, the doctor mentioned he uses a Pro 55 Sprint Ray printer. Well, since then, they've actually come out with a Pro 55S. We can help to, you know, understand, you know, help you understand what the differences are. He mentioned, well, I wouldn't necessarily want to just do clear aligner workflows with a Pro 55. I'd rather have the Pro 95 because of the build platform. We can help you make sense of what that means if you've never been around a 3D printer. Um, but we have a variety of ways to help you do that. We can go through nesting softwares and materials. Whatever topic comes up, we're here to help you with that. And the last thing that we are here to help you with, which I think uh, could excite everybody on the call if you're looking for one or more of these pieces, is we have a financing program with Henry Schein called Flex Financing. Flex Financing was designed to help you pay for this investment. And we all know that these are real dollars and you are clinicians and caretakers, but you're also business owners. And so the bottom line matters. We have a program that will help you pay for a 3D printer, a comb beam, a scanner, or all of the above. Uh, I really, again, my one suggestion, because I, I know we've been doing this for a while uh, this evening, and I don't want to overwhelm you more with uh, more detail, but please uh, schedule an appointment with your technology advisor, and they can go through how we can help you pay for this uh, investment. And with that, I would open it up to another q and I, I, again, don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, but would like to find out if there are some questions that have come up uh, since then. Matt, there were a couple uh, that came up and you, you might be best. It was a very detailed program on hybrid prosthetics tonight. Um, do you know manufacturers or uh, centers that would do the basics of printing uh, for general yes. practice? Where yes, it gets fact. Yes, in fact, um, one of the big topics, uh, or not topics, but one of the, the big things that are happening right now uh, are the manufacturers are taking on some of that responsibility uh, for themselves. And so Sprint Ray is going to have a education center of their own. On the East Coast, there's the, the, there are other institutes that you can go to. On the West Coast, there are uh, institutes that you can go to to be able to uh, learn anything from the very entry level to the most advanced, like what um, Dr. Anise was describing today. So there are plenty of ways to learn how to do these things. Also, if you plan this out with a technology advisor in advance and you haven't made these purchases yet, we can help you make sure you're getting the right components before you spend the, the money and make the investment into uh, getting into a training course. Great. And I, I think um, we didn't show the software, but that's one of the nice things you can do it, is the management of the software. 
Uh, you can see it right. You can virtually demonstrate how easy it is. And now uh, many of the softwares are automatically placing the device, right, and placing it on the footprint. Uh, so there's little to do, but you have the opportunity to log right in and see it, correct, and demonstrate. Yes, as far as nesting and uh, determining how much resin it's going to take, how long it's going to take, we can show you exactly how to do those things. We can show you exactly, um, you know, again, how long it's going to take, how much material it's going to use. And even from that, help you determine what the cost of that particular whatever fill in the blank would cost you to print. Most things are between three and seven dollars to print. Uh, it just depends on how much resin and the cost of the resin. Great. And although we can see you love golf in the background, we can also see you have a variety of different scanners and other technologies. Uh, can you explain just a bit about the different technologies you can demonstrate? I know you mentioned it on a slide. Yes. Um, I have several different cone beam softwares. Uh, I can help demonstrate how to place implants uh, with a cone beam in a number of different uh, um, brands. Same thing with integral scanners. Um, we have the Medit scanner, the DEXA scanner, the TRIO scanner, the Prime Scan scanner, and the Plan Mecha scanner. And I'm able to walk you through different workflows with each of those. Uh, in addition to that, I have a 3D printer in my office. Uh, I have been 3D printing um, for several years now. In fact, <laughs> since I have this moment, I wasn't planning on doing this. But here is a 3D printed model of uh, my father-in-law right before his all on X cases. Uh, had <laughs> both upper and lower arches. Um, I was able to scan him before he went in for the extractions. And then with the software that are built into some of the scanners, I was able to make this model with these struts so that we can see it in proper occlusion. Um, if you have ever articulated anything, here is another way of printing those. That is without the struts. This is the upper and lower arch. And if you don't have that model uh, articulator, at least in a place where you can see the occlusion, it's kind of hard to guess how those two pieces go together, as you all know, I'm sure. But all of that is built into the technology. It makes it so much easier when you can scan the upper, the lower, and the bite, and then lean on the technology to simply click print. Again, this print probably cost me $8 in all. Um, and so it's a uh, what you can do with the technology and how it's being done today versus the analog way, we can have some of that discussion. Now, I, I will warn you, neither myself, myself nor any of the other technology advisors are doctors. We just pretend to be one sometimes. So uh, we will do our best in leading you to the right place for training. We will definitely help you uh, with getting the correct uh, equipment, setting expectations, making sure you know what you're getting before you purchase. And then again, with the Flex program, Henry Schein can even help you pay for it. That's great. And and again, if anybody wants that personalized uh, demonstration, it's one-on-one, -on -one, virtually, you can demonstrate any of this. If they click on the uh, screen, the center of the screen, it's going to ask for their zip code or phone number, and it'll direct them to the most local uh, of the FTAs. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, I believe that is the case. Yeah. Okay. And then and you just can it my way, yeah. If it's just me that comes up, then I guess you're stuck with me, but I'd be happy <laughs> with that situation. That's great. And it just does a calendar light, right? So you can see what's open and you can choose any of the times. that they Exactly. Have. And that's one of the other things we've tried to do with this technology advisor role is make it very, very easy for you. Make it very easy to be able to, uh, to schedule a time with us at your convenience without all the back and forth of, hey, are you available now? Are you available then? And back and forth, you just click the link. If there is an open time that is convenient for you, you select it, and then you will go right into my calendar and plop that time from everyone else. So you better hurry because it fills up. <laughs> That's right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, and again, please take advantage of the personalized demonstration if you want to see all the capabilities of 
digital technology and dentistry. We did record tonight's webinar and we'll email the recording out sometime in the next week to all of you. We would appreciate your feedback via our survey that will pop up on your screen as you exit out. Appreciate any comments, suggestions, or new topics that you'd like to see by emailing us at webinars at henryshine.com. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful night. And we look forward to seeing future webinars. Thank you.